party conference. I know that there will be um, some anger and justifiable and quite right and some frustrations that the Labour Party now is effectively trying to pretend that it never passed. We know that they pulled the plug on the live streaming and uh, effectively are trying to, as I say, pretend that it didn't happen and it doesn't exist. The reality is the motion did pass. It was passed overwhelmingly on a show of hands. There wasn't even an attempt to say there should be a card vote or anything like that. So whether people like it or not, it does exist. And it is now Labour Party uh, policy as agreed by conference. So what I think we really need to do at this phase, now the dust has settled for a week, is really, um, first of all, concentrate on making sure that people are aware of it, that activists are aware that it exists and aware of the contents of the motion uh, itself and that it was passed with a massive majority. We should take heart in that and make sure that as far and wide as possible, people are aware of what that motion said. Secondly, um, I'd encourage everyone on the call that is a Labour Party member and active in their CLP to actually use the motion now as a basis for a discussion in their CLP. We know that many people have been um, afraid, the chilling effect that has been very present um, and has been felt by many people, been very nervous about discussing um, Palestinian rights and the Palestinian cause in the Labour Party for all the reasons that we all know um, very well. The fact is the motion was passed at the conference. That is the position. And simply by taking that motion, making sure that your CLP is aware of it, aware of what it says and aware of what its contents are and what it's calling for, I think that will play a huge role in raising awareness within the CLPs and within, act, uh, within our activist circles that it's OK to talk about Palestine, uh, Palestinian rights and the Palestinian cause. And also, most importantly, we should take heart from the fact that the text of the motion refers to the crime of apartheid being committed. It references the Human Rights Watch report and the Betzalem report. Uh, it also calls for effective measures and sanctions against Israel for um, committing the atrocities and the crime of apartheid as it is. So we should use the motion to reassure people this is the position. This is what was passed. It is OK um, to have this discussion, to refer to these issues and to use the language that was contained within the um, motion itself. From there, going forward, I think we'll need um, some more time to reflect on how we want to push things forward next year and where we want to go from here. But the very first step, concentrate on making sure people are aware of the motion, understand what's in it and feel very much reassured to use the language and um, refer to the motion as their position. I want to just close by saying, um, Matt, that I think the united position we arrived at was really quite incredible. I know there was a huge amount of work that went in to um, defining that position in the composite meetings and so on. But in the end, we had an overwhelming, huge majority from CLP delegates. And extremely important, the unions were united on this. The GMB voted in favour, as we know. Unison voted in favour. My own union, Unite, voted in favour, as did many, many others, like Aslef and so on. So we have a very strong, united position, overwhelming we need to maintain that position going forward. And I can absolutely assure you, Unite the Union will be there, making sure that this um, great point is taken forward and that we can build on it um, next year and strengthen it even further. Thanks very much, Matt, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Simon. Um, and thank you, Unite, for all the support you gave Simon individually as well for all the amazing work he's done on Palestine over a number of years.
Um, there's a lot of questions coming in. I can see that we've now got over 400 people directly with us, um, 250 here on Zoom and over 150 on the Facebook. Um, so that's promising at only a week's notice. We know that means thousands of people will see this meeting. Um, I can see questions coming in about keeping up the pressure. And one thing that I think would be really good is if we can get that statement that I mentioned before up to you know, like more like 20,000 Labour members from over a 1,000 CLPs, because then we can press release that, we can send it to the front bench and we can let people know that it's not just at conference, it's on the grassroots as well. Um, our next speaker is another brilliant campaigner for Palestine. Um, she's an official in the National Education Union speaking tonight on behalf of the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, Louise Regan. Thanks, Matt, and it's great to be here and it's really good to see Simon and other fantastic speakers on this panel. I mean, I was at Labour Conference uh, with my trade union, the National Education Union, which is not an affiliated union, but uh, is absolutely committed to supporting the cause of uh, the Palestinian people. And it was, as people have said, a truly historic moment when that motion was passed. It was truly uh, uh, heartwarming for me. And I know from my friends in Palestine, that they really, really saw that as an important point in, in the fight for their justice uh, and freedom. So for all of you that put work into that, thank you so much. So as has been said, I'm uh, the vice chair of Palestine Solidarity Campaign nationally. I think one of uh, the key features of what happened with this motion is the coordinated work that went behind achieving it. There were so many organizations, constituents, constituency labor parties, trade unions, labor and Palestine, Palestine solidarity campaign, young labor all came together and really, really worked together jointly, fought for this and made sure not only that the composite was a really clear and good composite motion that went forward, but also made sure that all those key components were lined up behind to make sure that this motion was passed. And as Simon has said, it was passed with no real contention, solid block from the trade union movement, which is really, really important. We know the TUC has passed motions recently over the recent years, which are really strong in support of Palestine but also a huge support from our uh, constituency delegates at Labour Party conference, and that is really important. I know, I spoke at the Labour and Palestine Fringe at conference, and I know people were extremely frustrated by what uh, Lisa and Andy said and, uh, and the comments, but what I said at that meeting, and I stand by this, is the people that will make this happen are the people in the constituencies. You going out, us going out, doing the footwork, Telling people what happened, continuing to raise our voices is, will, is what will make a difference now. It's really good that Labour and Palestine have so quickly set up this um, action, calling for people to sign in support of this. It's excellent that, that there's a motion for us to take forward to CLPs. What we really need now is for people to get behind those actions, to not see this as a job done. This is the start of a really, really important job. And as I said, when I when I spoke at the Labour and Palestine Fringe, you know, time is running out for the Palestinian people. Their land is being stolen from them on a daily basis. We have a duty. We have a duty now to our Palestinian friends to make sure that we act on this motion, that we take it forward, that we fight for it and that we win action on it. Uh, here, but also globally. And we know there's a huge increase in support globally for the Palestinian cause. I don't want to take too long, so I know there's some brilliant speakers and I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions. What I would say is this, take away the links from this motion, take uh, from this meeting in, in the chat, there's some really good links. Take that motion to your CLP, ask Labour and Palestine to provide a speaker, ask Palestine, Palestine Solidarity Campaign to provide a speaker. Let us get these voices out there speaking up and down the country and calling on our CLPs not only to take action and pass motions, make sure those motions are sent in. They need to be sent to the International Policy Forum. They need to be sent to the NEC. People need to know that we're not going away, that we've passed this motion, this historic motion, 
but that we're going to carry on. We're going to keep put, put, putting pressure on you until you do what has been decided at our national conference and you are going to act on it because that is what you're required to do. And the final thing I'll say is this, make sure you're following Labour and Palestine, make sure you're following Palestine Solidarity Campaign on all our social media platforms and sharing the things that we are doing. Make sure you're becoming members of those organisations and taking forward the, the other actions that we are asking for you to do in support of the Palestinian people and make sure that whatever you do, do not stop speaking about Palestine. They want us to stop speaking about Palestine. We're going to talk about it more. That's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about it every day, all day. And eventually we're going to win justice for the Palestinian people. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Louise. That was great. And um, Louise is right. The key thing is we just keep speaking up for Palestine and we keep it on the agenda. I've seen a few questions in the Q&A box about how you get something in the Labour manifesto. Um, well, I think that's a mystery to a lot of people. But formally, one thing that we can do is make sure when the policy forum processes come up that we feed things in. So last year, for example, we got over 100 people to submit the Labour and Palestine model submission to the Britain in the World policy process document and in the end it was actually two sentences of it albeit a little bit out of context it has to be say were quoted in the document so it is worth having those official using those official channels as well as using our unofficial channels of building up the pressure and so on and um, our next speaker is someone who is probably a more in line knows more about Labour Party rules and structures than I ever will um it's a wonderful Gemma Bolton Labour NEC member thank you Gemma Thanks, Matt. Thank you for having me. And I want to send my thanks uh, to all the Lele and Palestine team who work so hard organising for and raising the voice of Palestinian people within Labour so tirelessly. And I was, I was lucky enough to visit beautiful Palestine with my trade union, uh, Unite, in 2018. And I saw firsthand the suffering of the Palestinian people, how their land and property has, was stolen and I met uh, many refugees um, and they told me how their crops have been destroyed, age-old olive groves ripped up, that they're often denied their human right to water. And there is no freedom of movement and they're denied entry without permits, their most sacred capital, Jerusalem. And they're treated as second-class citizens, in fact, you know, often not like citizens at all. And as well as hearing harrowing stories of so many lost loved ones, but what I did see from my trip there was that Palestinian people are resilient and determined and they're not going to forget and they're not going to give up and neither will we when we're fighting for Palestinians and their cause in, in the UK. Um, and I'm sure you're all so happy uh, when you heard that the motion of Palestine passed the party conference last week. And I was so proud as co-chair of the Campaign for Labour Party Democracy. We worked alongside Labour and Palestine to promote the motion calling for peace and justice for the Palestinian people. And that uh, composite the past was the most progressive motion on Palestine to pass a Labour conference. It's a motion that refers specifically to the crime of apartheid and calls for strong sanctions against Israel. And to hear just Hours after the motion had passed, our Foreign Secretary, Lisa Nandy, had already put a statement distancing herself and the party from the motion was a hugely disappointing turn of events. And I think not only does it show a fundamental lack of respect for our sovereign body um, of our party, which our party conference, but also for party members, for trade unions and for young Labour who worked so hard to pass it and led to it being passed overwhelmingly on the conference floor. But we must continue to fight in the party and keep talking about Palestine and human rights at every single level of the party and wherever and whenever we can, at every level we can. And we must allow the voice of Palestinian struggle not to be drowned out or deprived of oxygen. So people said invite um, speakers on Palestine to your CLP meetings, pass motions at your branch and CLP and send them up to the NEC, um, send them to the Shadow Cabinet, send them to Lisa Nani, send them to Keir Starmer and continue to support the great work of organisations such as Labour in Palestine, Palestine Solidarity Campaign and more. And, and keep fighting and keep fighting for the Palestinian cause as we will when uh, that, that cause five meeting comes at some point and those of us on the NEC who, who have who have some voice in those meetings can stand up and fight and say that pro-Palestinian rights, Palestinian rights will be in the manifesto and we will continue to fight um, for uh, 
so the socialist policies and for uh, human rights uh, to be at the forefront of of Labour's messaging and Labour's uh, what Labour presents to to the voters and to the electorate. So let's make it clear right here that our, in our CRPs and our trade unions and beyond, they will not waver in our solidarity with the Palestinian people, and we will continue to fight for a Labour Party that will honour its international obligations, stand against human rights violations wherever in the world they take place, and say unequivocally, "Free Palestine." Thank you. Thank you, Gemma. Um, thank you everyone who's contributing in the discussion in the Q&A and nearly 300 of you on Zoom and over 500 in total now, so it's really great turnout. Um, different uh, different views and different experiences being put in the Q&A about motions. Um, some people saying that the, in some CLPs that isn't to north, the motion is being taken for discussion ne this next meeting, uh, the model motion. Others saying they don't think they'll be allowed to discuss it in a CLP. If you're not allowed to discuss it in your CLP or your ward, um, please do let us know. And also then we can make sure that we speak to NEC members, unions and others to see what's going on with that. Because obviously the motion is in the context of a motion conference has now passed. So it's pretty astonishing, although perhaps not necessarily surprising that some people are trying to block it being discussed. Our next speaker um, is a long term champion of Palestine. And actually someone has in the chat um made this comment which i'm just going to read out in full which is we are approaching the 13th of october the anniversary of the historic parliamentary vote in 2014 championed by graham morris and supported by our then leader ed Miliband, to recognize a palestinian state we should celebrate this vote every year as a movement um and it's great in back of that comment to introduce graham morris mp thanks thanks ever so much matt and it's it's a real privilege to, uh, to, to follow Simon and uh, Louise and Gemma. And uh, th th thanks ever so much for that uh, uh, glowing introduction. Um, the, 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 the subject is the next steps um, following Labour Party conference. Now, I, I do also, uh, at the risk of uh, repetition, want to uh, heap praise and thanks on uh, Labour Party delegates, CLPs, trade unions, uh, young Labour members who've championed this course through, uh, and I know how difficult it can be in terms of trying to pursue, even when the issue is, is a just cause, uh, to pursue the issue and to get it to conference and to have it passed so overwhelmingly on the floor of the conference, I think is, it's no understatement to say it, it is a, an historic achievement, but it's an opportunity and a springboard. And, and, and I must say this, and you know, I was at the um, a, a number of fringe meetings, in, including the Labour and Palestine fringe meeting, which uh, um, Louise and a number of others spoke at, and His Excellency, the, the Ambassador. And uh, a, a colleague of mine, uh, Belle, uh, uh, was speaking and, and, and she pointed out that we are often the subject of intimidation by trolls who seek to misconstrue and manipulate the comments that we make justly in support of justice for the Palestinian people and, and, and present that as being some form of anti-Semitism. That is not the case. And I want to just warn anybody who's planning to make mischief uh, that, 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 that we will resist that. And please don't be put off that the resolution is very specific. It was passed at the TUC and at our own conference. I, I, do want, I do want to dwell just for a moment or two in the time that I've got to say that, yes, of course I agree, Israel has the right to exist. Of course I do. The answer is, of course, yes. But so do the Palestinians have the same rights and an equal right to exist in a sovereign state, free of external interference, free of occupation, and with full human rights. Palestine must have a, an equal right to exist on the same terms as the sovereign state of Israel. And the rights of self-determination are not negotiable. So I, I do think we've got a, a, an historic role to play. You, you know, we are, as a country, the originators of the Balfour Declaration just over 100 years ago and the holder of the mandate for Palestine. So Britain's got a, a unique historical and arguably a moral responsibility to the people of both Israel and Palestine. 
And it, it seems a long time ago, even for an old guy like me, but in 1920, we undertook a sacred trust, a commitment to guide Palestinians to statehood and independence. And that was over 100 years ago. And the Palestinian people are still to have their national rights recognised. It's a disgrace. I heard the ambassador at the fringe meeting saying, we don't want to hear that the settlements are illegal. We know that. We want them to be treated as illegal. He said, we don't want to hear about our rights under international law. We know what they are. We want some action to uphold those rights. And really the position of the British government has been lamentable. We've heard lip service from ministers. We've raised issues in, in debates, but we really must step up the pressure using that foundation of the resolution. To, to put pressure through our own CLPs, through our own organisations, through our own members of parliament, to ensure that the Palestinians really do have full rights, human rights, and the right of self-determination. I, I think we certainly need to use every opportunity within our own CLPs, very kind offer from Louise to provide speakers. I do hope that they'll be taken up. Uh, without passing this motion, ordinary Labour members, uh, we, we, you know, if, if they are involved and approve, sign the petition, it's a gesture of international solidarity that that's, that's what we as a party, that is in our very fibre, in our very beep, in our very being, and it, pr it proves that we are standing firmly, uh, giving a commitment to the Palestinians. Uh, I know time's brief, but you did remind me, and my dear friend Talib, um, who, who I spoke to at the conference, reminded me about that uh, historic vote in the House of Commons. Uh, an enormous effort. I mean, I, I moved the resolution, but many, many people were involved in the discussions behind the scenes uh, with the Labour leadership, with Ed Miliband, to his credit, uh, who supported that. And our front bend pos position that, 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 that uh, uh, supported it. Uh, and that, that resolution was passed on the 13th of October 2014, and the House of Commons voted by 274 votes to 12 in a packed chamber after a heated debate to approve that motion to recognise the state of Palestine alongside the state of Israel as a contribution to securing a negotiated two-state settlement. Now, surely if we are going to put any pressure to achieve that aim where, where Palestinians and Israelis can live side by side with secured peace and, 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 and human rights and, and everything that goes with it, then we must use this building block from conference as a basis to pressurize the British government to apply sanctions be the, uh, 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 on, on the perpetrators who are breaking international law. I'm going to leave it at that, Matt, because I know time's short and, and I know that we have Hussam Zumlot and the excellent speakers uh, from Young Labour who did such a sterling job. So again, can I just reiterate my thanks, uh, express my continuing support and solidarity uh, for the Palestinian cause uh, and implore people to stay involved and to use this as a basis for pushing forward and to putting pressure on the Labour leadership who want to drive a wedge between um, themselves and the membership on this key issue of our time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Graham. Um, and it's an honour now to introduce to say a few words the Palestinian ambassador, um, someone who has been a great representative and voice of the Palestinian people for many years. Uh, I first personally met him over 20 years ago when he represented the General Union of Palestinian Students. He's been the voice of the Palestinian people in the US in very difficult circumstances and now here in the UK. Thank you very much for joining us, Ambassador Hussam Sommer. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Matt. Uh, yes, uh, you, you, you remind me how old we are becoming, all of us, Matt, even though we are keeping a bit of vibe and energy. Um, yeah, it's been a long journey, but uh, thanks, uh, Matt, uh, th thanks to um, Labour and Palestine and to all our friends uh, here, uh, Simon, uh, Louise, uh, Graham, uh, Gemma. Uh, you know, I'm here really primarily just to convey our greetings and uh, gratitude 
uh, for that historic uh, moment you made me witness uh, only a few days ago. Uh, um, you know, we did describe it as historic, uh, primarily for the following reasons, four reasons. The first is it was democratic and uh, nothing would beat democracy, the voice of the people, the members, the elected delegates. Uh, and the fact that it has uh, uh, received the overwhelming support of the floor of the of the conference is a testament, uh, a, a powerful statement of where the hearts and the minds of the uh, labor is, uh, the, the members of labor, the base of labor, uh, uh, the constituency of labor is. Uh, uh, and of course, it showed the unity of the main labor uh, institutions and organizations around the issue of Palestine. We know all the institutions that have really put a lot of efforts in this, including, of course, uh, the uh, uh, trade unions, chiefly among them, the trade unions, but also uh, young labor, uh, uh, labor in Palestine, um, uh, the PSC, and all the institutions uh, involved. You've ca you've come together and you have shown uh, the power of the base, the power of the people. The second is the content, as Simon uh, uh, tilted it towards. Uh, this is a very serious uh, uh, content whereby. We no longer talk about two sides that are almost equal. As I said, uh, Graham, in my talk uh, uh, in the conference, that you know this whole equivalence that has been uh, 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 following us for almost 30 years has really been a main reason and purpose of failure because we are not equal. I mean, there is an occupied and, and occupier, a colonized and a colonizer, a besieged and a besieger, uh, uh, a country that employs apartheid uh, uh, tools and people who are under this apartheid regime. Uh, the, the content of the of the of the motion was very clear uh, that uh, you know the Palestinian people are uh, 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 struggling uh, against colonialism, against segregation and racism, um, and also applying some very tangible, uh, concrete actions finally to actually uh, uh, attach consequences to illegalities, including the issue of the illegal settlements. Um, thirdly, is the timing, and I must say, as a Palestinian ambassador. We all have witnessed the vicious campaign to silence the voices in labor, in the United Kingdom, in Europe and worldwide. And Graham has touched upon this issue and many of our colleagues. So comes this motion right in the middle of all that vicious campaign uh, to deliver such a verdict that the true laborers, the true Brits are not intimidated. They will stick by the beliefs. And it was really refreshing. Such a loud and clear uh, voice came out of the conference hall uh, that uh, day. Number four, and finally, is the message that was desperately needed by the people of Palestine. And it came at the right time, as Louise said, that the Palestinian people have been contacting here and contacting many others, uh, uh, expressing their gratitude and their appreciation for this, because nothing I believe our people need to know more than the international solidarity. They, it gives them empowerment, inspiration, ability to continue on this very difficult uh, uh, terrain we are in uh, and path uh, we have been upon for all these uh, years. I tell you what you have done has, has truly, truly uh, empowered uh, the, the people of, of Palestine. Now, people say just after the motion was passed, you know, this was a one-off uh, event one off uh, incident, uh, it will not be follow, followed up. The answer came today with this very uh, meeting, with this very uh, uh, discussion, uh, uh, public it is involving all the mainstream labor components, uh, Matt. So thank you for doing the follow up, the next steps. Uh, this uh, is the answer to Louise, that we need to build a, a movement to go ahead. This is only the beginning. And it is the beginning. So this is such a loud and clear statement for everybody that it was not a one-off incident. It was just uh, the start uh, for what you are discussing now. Uh, I don't want to repeat what Simon said about the next steps and the need to uh, actually reach out to the LCPs and the need to go to the public and to need, need to make sure that this is not a nominal decision by the party, but it is a real democratic decision uh, implemented by the leadership. I believe Labour is a democratic party and in the end the leadership will have to heed the democratic uh, uh, decision by the uh, lot. Uh, I will repeat what Louis said earlier, we have got no time left. Uh, I assure you the urgency is huge. Uh, it, we are almost a minute before midnight, and this is not just to, um, no, it is a, a minute before midnight. Uh, you have seen what happened only in May. 
and I have a feel and I'm following events in Jerusalem, in Gaza, in the West Bank, in the 48 areas everywhere, uh, what we see is that we are upon another serious uh, aggression by the Israeli authorities in every sphere. Uh, the uh, land grab is at a pace uh, everywhere, the settlement, mushrooming and expansion, the provocation in Jerusalem, you may have heard what happened in Al-Aqsa Mosque only yesterday via a ruling of a court. So. Uh, 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 what happened in Labour Conference is a historic mark. It's a, it's a serious step. And I will quote Gordon Brown once he said when he started as a Prime Minister in 10 Downing Street, he said, let work begin. And I think, Louise, you have started this work, so we are with you. The, it's not going to be easy. We know all the challenges. We know all the forces against us. But we also know that when you have people like you, when you have the hearts and the minds of all these freedom-loving people, very principled, very, very extremely uh, out of convictions and belief of the virtues and the values of labor, the values of our humanity, the universal values, uh, we, when we know the strength of this belief amidst all these attacks, and yet you still are able to deliver that verdict, then we know the destination is assured and we know we will reach it sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, great to have you with us here. And also great to have so many people with us. Over 500 people tuned in live, which means, as I said earlier, thousands, probably tens of thousands of people will see it. Um, I'm just going to go to a couple of comments because we're having a lot of lovely comments. Um, first of all, thank greetings to our international viewer from India. Um, great to have you with us as well. And um, we've got people here from Sheffield, Edinburgh, all boas over London, Wolverhampton, Fenland, Bristol. Liverpool, Suffolk, Worthing, Oxford, Hexham, Kent, Basildon, Oldham, Whittlesea, West Wales, and I'm sure I've missed, missed a lot out. But thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, also, in terms of some interesting comments in the chat, someone has pointed out, which I think it's something that we need to make sure we do on this issue as well, including if the policy is ignored, which is how much it wasn't covered in the media and how it was nearly media blacked out. Um, and we need to make sure that, that we're speaking up for Palestine and that's covered in the media and that we're doing it wherever and whenever we can. Um, and it's great to have Graham here, who's such a regular voice in Parliament and makes such a difference. Um, also, I'd like to take this opportunity to quickly thank the volunteers, both from Labour and Palestine and also Arise, who have lent the technology and the streaming platforms to us tonight. That's uh, Sam, Amy, Patrick, and about four people all called Ben. Um, thank you to all of them. And um, also on your links here, you will see a retweet message. Um, that is the sort of main tweet about the statement. Um, I've got the statement in front of me, the sort of counter on it on my screen, and it's gone up over 500 people doing this event. So that means a lot of you are signing it, but also telling your friends, please do retweet that message. It's a very simple step, but these are the things that make the difference and help amplify our collective voice. Um, another quick comment that I'd like to come in on, I'm just going to get it up on my screen, is um, a nice message from a 14-year-old British Lebanese girl, who I won't name, living in North Yorkshire, who says um, that she is uh, very much likes to listen to interviews by Mr Zomlet. You are an inspiration to her and her brother as they read and learn about Palestine and um, something maybe we can put her in touch with Louise after this meeting. She wants to make change in her school to do with the lack of education around the people of Palestine and how one-sided it is. And I think it's great to have people of all ages and all different nationalities on this call and what a great message that, that was to receive. Um, I have a few closing remarks, but before then, our final speaker is actually two speakers, um, which is great. We've got a team presentation one then the other from young labor who were both amazingly these individuals and collectively amazingly helpful putting in their very strong motion to conference working with us and then moving it and um, first we're going to hear from Nikisa and then Fraser both from the young labor national committee um, and then I have a couple of closing remarks Nikisa thank you so much Matt and thank you to labor and Palestine for organizing this and inviting Fraser and I to come and speak um, tonight I was lucky enough to represent Young Labour uh, at annual conference this year and therefore help put together the composite motion on Palestine. Um, and young members in our party overwhelmingly chose to propose a motion on Palestine, uh, despite being banned from conference by this quite frankly dictatorial party leadership. We weren't going down without a fight. 
We made it quite clear that we weren't going to allow the voices of the Palestinian people to be silenced. And as socialists, young Labour believe that the cause of the Palestinian liberation is our own. That's why alongside several CLPs who worked equally as hard to propose this motion, we felt it's so important to ensure that members of our party do not and will not simply forget about this. We must make sure that Palestine and the hardships faced by the Palestinian people is always at the top of the agenda. The motion clearly condemned Israel's continuing illegal actions, and this was despite the fact that the chair cut short the debate. And to be clear, a motion standing in defense of the colonized or the oppressed is not too shouty as suggested. We're socialists and that is what we do. However, the fact that our motion passed showed that our party stands in solidarity with Palestine and supports a campaign to boycott, disinvest and introduce sanctions. It was significant as it differs from previous motions on Palestine put to conference, firstly, because it referenced apartheid and secondly, it called unequivocally for Labour to support effective measures, including sanctions, both a step change for the party and, a hu and have huge potential. This would particularly include action to stop building settlements, reversing any annexation and aim to end the occupation and the blockade of Gaza. Sadly, though, and without any debate or discussion in what was quite clearly a pre-planned move, as we know, almost immediately afterwards, the shadow foreign secretary distanced herself and the leadership from the motion and stated in no uncertain terms that it did not represent a fair and balanced approach. But the reality is there's nothing fair and balanced about living under occupation by one of the most rigorous military regimes on the planet. If our party is at all to have a progressive international foreign policy, then it must be on the side of the Palestinian people. To support the status quo after 70 years of occupation with military trade, economic aid and favourable trade agreements is nothing more than siding with Israel and its contempt for international law and the human rights of Palestinian people. And our job is now to push back on Nandi's statement. We need to ensure that the words of this crucial motion become a mainstream view of the party. We need to be able to discuss it with every CLP across the country. We have fought too hard to now let it disappear Ultimately, we need to ensure that the party's parliamentary leadership is held accountable. And it's clear that there is a lot of support for our motion, especially among young people and overwhelming grassroots support. We must support the Palestinian people until Israel complies with international law and ends its oppressive apartheid regime and settler expansionism. And I'm really happy to be speaking here um, alongside Fraser, who's gonna now talk a bit more about Young Labour's plan to keep Palestine at the top of the agenda, if Fraser wants to speak. Uh, good evening, comrades. My name is Fraser. I'm one of the student reps on the Young Labour Committee. Um, it was a pleasure to work with Nikisa and other comrades on the motion we brought to conference this year. Um, thank you so much to Labour in Palestine for having us speak today and organising this event. It's so important to have a group to organise those of us inside the Labour movement that are committed to the Palestinian struggle, to the full demands of Palestinian civil society and the cause of Palestinian liberation. So we know that Britain has a particular historic responsibility for the ongoing Nakba in Palestine. From the Balfour Declaration to the Mandate for Palestine, which began the settlement and ethnic cleansing of Palestinian land, to the contemporary political, military and economic investment of the British ruling class in Israeli apartheid. We're here today because as socialists in Britain, we feel the weight of that responsibility and an affinity with the Palestinian struggle. We know that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. But this isn't just a moral statement, it is a statement of political fact. We've seen over the last few years how lies and misunderstanding about the oppression of the Palestinians have been used to disorient, confuse and weaken us as socialists to enormous effect. But the tide is turning, space is opening up in the Labour Party to name and explain Israeli settler colonialism for what it is. Even to unite the left behind the demands and rights of the Palestinian people would have been a critically important victory to build the Palestine Solidarity Campaign. But in spite of everything at conference this year, we have won an unprecedented commitment in Labour Party policy to sanction the apartheid state of Israel. The incredible unified wave of Palestinian resistance to Israeli colonialism this year didn't stop at Israeli checkpoints. It didn't stop at the bogus borders of the occupied territories, 
It didn't stop at the edges of historic Palestine. It didn't stop with Palestinians in exile. Millions around the world took action in solidarity with the Palestinian people. We saw the biggest mobilization in solidarity with Palestine in the history of this country. And it didn't stop at the Labour Party either. The power of the Palestinian struggle has created new opportunities for solidarity in our party that we have to be alive to. As young socialists that marched and organized for Palestine, we saw this and it's why we decided to bring a motion on Palestine to conference this year as Young Labour. We can also see that young people are increasingly seeing through Israel's propaganda and understanding the oppression of the Palestinian people for what it is. Recognizing that it's people that have a right to exist, a right to return to their homeland, and a right to resist colonial domination under international law. Apologists for colonialism and apartheid might control the heights of the Labour Party for now, but the ground is shifting beneath their feet. We know that a strong majority of Labour Party members support the campaign to boycott, divest and sanction Israel. We know that the Palestine solidarity movement in society is growing and we can win this fight at the grassroots of the Labour movement. So as everybody said, it's critical that we build on this victory over the year ahead. We need to bring motions in defense of the policy we've won and open up space for Palestine solidarity in our CLPs and trade union branches. We need to unite socialists in our party and beyond behind the demands of the Palestinian people. We need to get members to start asking questions about exactly what their Labour councils are invested in. And as young Labour, we need to give young members political education about the realities of Israeli apartheid and colonialism. So thank you so much for having me today. I just wanted to end by sharing a little anecdote from conference about our shadow foreign secretary. Shortly after the Palestine motion passed, I was at the bottom of the stairs, the conference floor, raising money for young Labour. I saw Lisa Nandy, so I thought I'd go over to see if I could get a donation out of her. She wouldn't give us any money, but she did look me dead in the eyes and said, well done to your young Labour colleagues in compositing. They were fantastic. So I think it's important to remember the depth of shameless opportunism that we are up against. But I also think it should give us hope because it's a politics out of its time. Apologism for apartheid is not the future, comrades. The liberation of Palestine is the future. Solidarity and thank you for having us. Thank you, Fraser. And thank you to Young Labour for your doing. Um, and shame on those who are trying to shut down Young Labour's democracy and right to exist and discuss matters. Um, if they're confident in their own political positions, then surely they should be confident to discuss, debate and organise around them. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, just quickly, if you can, please do donate on the link provided to the streaming costs. Um, it does, I don't know if everyone knows this, but webinars and streaming do cost hundreds of pounds, basically, every time you put one on. So it is important to do that. As other speakers have said, we must now harness all our support that there is for Palestine within our party to advocate our support collectively for Palestinian rights. Following this historic motion, let's clearly say now is the time to deepen commitments and solidarity in Palestine, not water them down. And let's loudly stand by democratically agreed policy. Um, keep an eye out on Labour in Palestine for a few initiatives around that theme on making sure pressure is put on to keep the policy and implement it. And please, to that end, do pass policy and discuss it in your own CLPs. Do sign a statement and help us get over 10,000 people ASAP and do keep involved with Labour in Palestine. Um, thank you to our speakers. Thank you to the hundreds of you who've tuned in and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.